Exploring Macros in Excel 2013 A macro is a series of instructions or commands that can be triggered by a keyboard shortcut, button in the toolbar, or by an icon that you stick in a worksheet. When you use a macro, you are giving Excel instructions for what you want it to do. However, instead of taking multiple steps to give Excel those instructions, you only take one. Macros are stored in Excel and can be restored to use again and again. In this lesson, we're going to explore macros in Excel 2013, including how to create and run a macro, how to save a workbook that contains macros, set the security settings for a workbook with macros, use the personal macro workbook, delete a macro, use absolute or relative references in macros, or use the keyboard shortcut to run a macro. The best way to teach you how to create and run a macro is to walk you through it step by step. In this worksheet here, we've simply listed the tasks that we want our macro to perform. We're going to create a macro that selects cell A1, enters our name into it, makes the font italic and increases the size to 14, then uses auto fit to determine the column size. Notice that number five is telling the macro to stop. This is important. You record a macro. Just as with anything you record, you must tell it to stop. So let's create the macro. To record a macro, you can go to the developer tab and click record macro. Or you can go to the bottom of your worksheet and click the button to the right of the word ready. You'll then see the record macro dialog box. First, give your macro a name in the macro name field. You can name your macro anything you want. However, the name cannot contain spaces. Next, we can tell Excel what keyboard shortcut to use. We aren't going to fill that in right this second. Instead, let's move on to the next field. In Store Macro In, you have three choices. There are only two that you need of these three choices. Personal Macro Workbook stores the macro with your machine. We'll talk more about this later in the lesson. This workbook stores the macro with your current workbook. If you send the workbook via email to someone else, the macros will be there for them to use. We're going to choose this workbook. Next, enter a description for your macro. Click OK. When you click OK, the recorder starts to run. If you look at the ribbon under the developer tab, you can see that it says stop recording where the record macro button used to be before you clicked it. To the right of the word ready, you'll see a white square that looks like a stop button on a tape recorder. You can click either one of those things to stop recording your macro. Now you can start recording your macro by performing the actions we listed. Take your time when you record your macro. If you make a mistake, even if you undo it, Excel records that mistake. Excel does not record the time it takes you to enter your macro though. That said, it's important that you take your time. So let's record our macro and then press stop recording. To make sure your macro recorded or to access your macro, go to the developer tab again and click on the macros button. Our macro example is shown in this list. If you want to run the macro, click on the run button. It's very important when you save a workbook that contains macros, that you save them as a macro enabled workbook. If you don't save them as a macro enabled workbook, the macros won't be saved. To save a workbook with macros, Go to the File menu, and then go to Save As. Now choose a location where you want to save the workbook. In the Save As dialog box, go to the Save As Type field, and choose Excel Macro Enabled Workbook, which is usually the second one on the list. Note that Macro Enabled Workbooks have a different file extension, which is .xlsm. A workbook without macros is .xlsx. You can then name your file and click on the Save button. Now that we've saved our macro enabled workbook, we also need to set the security settings for our workbook since it has macros. To do this, we'll go to the developer tab again. This time we'll click the macro security button. This takes us to the trust center and automatically opens it with the macro settings tab selected. Under macro settings, you can establish security settings. By default, disable all macros with notification is checked. You want to leave this checked. 
Whenever you open a workbook that contains macros, you'll be asked if you want to enable the macros. Click OK. When you save and close a workbook, and then reopen it, you will see a message above your workbook. Click Enable Content button so that you can use the macros in the workbook. Once you enable the content for a workbook, you'll not see the security warning again for that workbook. The content will be automatically enabled. The personal macro workbook doesn't exist until you create it. You create a personal macro workbook when you create and save your first workbook, choosing to save it to your personal macro workbook. Each time you open Excel, the macros you created in your personal macro workbook will be there for you to use. Your personal macro workbook will be available for you to use no matter what Excel workbook you open, as long as you open it on the machine where you created that personal macro workbook. For example, if you create the personal macro workbook on your desktop computer that you have at home, the macros that you save to that personal macro workbook will be open to you. It doesn't matter what workbook you created them in. They will be available to all workbooks that you open while on your home desktop computer. However, if you use your laptop or a computer at the office, the personal macro workbook as well as the macros that you created on your desktop computer will not be available to you. Your personal macro workbook and all the macros included in it are machine specific. That said, when you open your macros, you will be able to distinguish between macros that are part of your personal macro workbook from the macros that are workbook specific. These macros that are part of your personal macro workbook will have the personal.xlsb in front of the macro name. To create and store a macro in the personal macro workbook, click on the record macro under the developer tab. In store macro in field, select personal macro workbook from the drop down menu. When you store a macro in your personal macro workbook, Excel will confirm that you want to save that macro in your personal macro workbook when you try to exit Excel. This only happens the first time you exit Excel after you store a macro in your personal macro workbook. You'll see a message shown. If you click save, the macro is saved in your personal macro workbook. If you click don't save, then the macro will not be saved and will not be available in any workbook again. If you'd like to back up your files, the file that contains your personal macro workbook is titled XLS Start. The path to it will always be Microsoft, then Excel, then XLS Start. Where your Microsoft folder is stored will depend on your operating system and installation. To delete a macro that you've saved to a workbook, go to the Developer tab, then click on the Macros button. Select a macro by clicking on it, then click on Delete. You'll then see this message. Click the Yes button if you want to delete the macro. If you try to delete a macro that's included in your personal macro workbook using these steps, you'll see a message. It tells you to unhide the workbook before you can delete it, so click OK. We'll show you how to unhide the workbook in a minute. For now, it's important to remember that macros stored in your personal macro workbook are stored in the personal.xlsb workbook. When you open another workbook in Excel, those workbooks are available to you to use. However, the macros aren't stored in the workbook you've opened. Again, they're stored in the personal.xlsb workbook instead. In order to delete a macro from the personal.xlsb workbook, you first must unhide it. To unhide the workbook, click on the View tab. Click Unhide in the Window group. Select the workbook you want to unhide. You can see that our personal macro workbook is listed. Then click OK. The personal macro workbook is now open on your machine. To delete a macro from it, go to the Developer tab and click on the Macros button. Select the macro you want to delete and then click on the Delete button. you see this message. Click Yes. In this case, I don't want to delete this one, so I'm going to click No. Close your macro workbook as you would any other workbook. You'll then see this message. Click Save to save these changes. Remember, an absolute cell reference in Excel is where you want a cell reference to be fixed on a cell. In Excel, you can mark rows and columns in absolute by adding the dollar sign before either the row, column, or both when working with formulas. A relative cell reference is a cell reference that can change when something, such as a formula, is copied from one cell to another. We've seen examples of relative references in this course when we dragged from the bottom right handle down to essentially copy a formula into the different cells and complete a worksheet. In Excel 2013, whenever you create and record a macro, the cell references are automatically absolute. If you create a macro that starts in A1, 
If you use that macro in a different worksheet, it will start in cell A1. It doesn't matter which cell is active when you run the macro, it'll run in cell A1. When you create a relative reference when recording a macro, you can have the macro run in any cell. For example, you can create the macro when cell A1 is active. When you run the macro, you can run it with cell F4 active and the macro will run in cell F4. To use a relative reference when recording a macro, go to the Developer tab and click on the Use Relative References button. Next, click on the Record Macro button. Go ahead and name the macro, then choose where you want to store it. You can also enter a description. Click OK. Record the macro as we did earlier in the course. When you're finished, just stop recording. Now you can click on any cell in a worksheet, go to Macros in the Developer tab, and run your macro. It will appear in the cell that's active. If you don't want future macros to have relative references, make sure you go back to the Developer tab and click Use Relative References again to turn off the use of relative references when recording macros. So far in this lesson, whenever we wanted to run a macro, we went to the Developer tab and then clicked on the Macros button. However, since macros are supposed to save time and create shortcuts, this can seem like extra work that's not really needed. Instead of going to the Developer tab and clicking macros every time you want to run one, you can instead assign a macro a keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut always involves the control key plus a letter on your keyboard. You must choose a letter. Shortcut can't involve numbers or symbols. If you choose an uppercase letter, the keyboard shortcut will be Control shift and the letter that you choose. If you choose lowercase, it will be simply the Control key plus the letter that you choose. Let's create a new macro by going to the Developer tab and clicking on Record Macro. Go ahead and name the macro. Now enter in a shortcut, such as Control shift a then click OK. Now record our macro. Stop recording when you're finished. Now, whenever we want to use that macro we just created, we can simply push Control, Shift and A.